Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria Yampolsky. I'm the president and founder of the Startup Station, an education and finance advisory for early stage startups. Welcome to our weekly strategic finance tips. In this video, we're going to discuss most common investor rejections and what they really mean. So you may hear from investors uh, something like this. We don't invest in people. We invest in teams. You need more people on the team than just you. Right? So when you hear something like this, what do they actually mean? Why are they saying it? Here's our perspective. You cannot execute alone, right? Uh, there's only so much you can do by yourself. You only have one brain. You only have that much time. You only have that much knowledge, right? So A, when you're just working by yourself, it increases execution risk. Of course, you can say, I don't have money to hire other people. However, if this is your first startup, investors may question if you have um, an ability to attract the right people, to identify the right people, right? So that's why having people on a team even if they are advisors right now or involved with the company um, on a part-time basis, it's good to give investors an education who are the people that will be executing once um, there is financing in place. And another thing I th think they're wondering about is that you can't seem to convince anyone else that your idea is good, right? So then uh, if you can't convince anybody else, then why should they give you money, right? Why they should be convinced? So basically, it's a, um, almost a, a two-pronged reason, right? One is that you need to reduce execution risk because you need to tell them exactly who's going to be executing on the plan. And another one is that you need to prove to them that somebody else believes in you, right? To lend more credibility to your idea. That is actually why um, having a board of advisors is so good because um, it would be subject matter experts in different areas who will uh, assuage the, those fears that investors may have. The second reason is the following. The idea is promising, but you need more customers to validate that the product provides value, right? Or come back when you have more traction, right? What does it mean? Well, I mean, the, what they really mean, I guess, in this case is what they say, that you have not proven there is a product market fit, that there is a demand for your product, and um, that's why the execution risk is too high, right? So um, it may be that you're approaching an investor that doesn't invest in ventures, which are pre-revenue, where you have no traction, you haven't really validated your concept yet. Um, or it can be that um, your just venture is just not investable at the moment. And what you need to do is that you need to do a little bit more of customer discovery. You need to talk to more customers. You need to produce service. You need to uh, get some free users. You need to um, get some testimonials of potential clients about the reaction to the future product. Something that will tell investors, look, I have done my homework. I know my customers. I know their pain points. I know that they need it and they need it right now. Right? So if you haven't done that work and you're not giving investors enough confidence, even regardless of whether you have revenues or not, then they may perceive your venture as having too much risk and may not want to get involved, especially if you have no successful past track record proving that even if they get involved, involved in this stage, then um, you will be able to execute, right? And you will be val able to validate the product market fit. Uh, rejection statement number three is that we prefer to invest in businesses with a recurring revenue model, right? Which is why SaaS businesses, for example, which stands for software as a service, are so popular, right? Why? Because um, there is a predictability in cash flows, right? Everybody likes predictability because it reduces risk. So if your business model is different, right? You have a marketplace, you have an advertising model, you have... Um, some other model, services model, does it mean that you can't get funding? No, right? But here's a weakness in your model. And that is because um, the investors view it as too uncertain, right? So um, what they think is it relies too much on generating new customers all the time, which is hard. So if your model, if your model does not have a recurring component in its nature because of what it is, it's fine but you have to prove how you're going to consistently generate uh, a steady customer pipeline and how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost. 
It doesn't necessarily mean that investors will never invest in uh, businesses with uh, a non-recurring revenue model. It just means that your business is not attractive to them because you haven't proven to them how you're going to generate revenue on a consistent basis, whether it's from a recurring revenue model or some other model. And finally, uh, this is a very big reason, right? The product needs to be defensible. What's the barrier to entry? So what do they mean here? What would they mean is this, right? Sometimes um, people create products and uh, they only can enjoy the first mover's advantage because there's no IP, just something that makes uh, a process that already exists better uh, or, uh, you know, solves the problem in a faster way or something like this. And uh, when somebody can easily replicate your product, right, what can happen is a big competitor is going to know about it and they can repeat it. And if you have no defense mechanism, whether it's a... Uh, um, access to a lot of customers so there is brand recognition or you have some technology that can be replicated. Uh, you can really fall prey to um, them just overtaking you and pushing you out of the market because of course they're going to have more marketing power and more dollars to put on something like this. You know, you're really uh, the only good outcome at this point is to get acquired by those players because they would not want to invest time in developing the technology which they can just buy from you. And so they consider the opportunity cost of them developing that technology to be higher than paying for your startup, then this is an uh, easy exit. But if this happens in the too early of a stage where, you know, they can easily do it themselves, then you are at real risk. So investors don't like ventures that are categorized like this. They want to see that you have a plan, how you're going to deter competition. You want to show to investors why competitors can't do it right away, why they have not done it already if it's so easy. Right? Because if they haven't done it, it doesn't mean that there's no demand. And this goes to the rejection reason number uh, two, where there's no product market fit. So um, all of these reasons, if you think about uh, them more closely, they make you evaluate um, your business proposition deeper. Right? They make you think harder. They make you look at the weak spots. And they, as a result, make your business stronger. Um, and this is it. And here you go. If you like this video, please share with your colleagues and friends in the startup community. Sign up for our YouTube channel to watch other strategic finance tips every Tuesday. And follow us on social media for more educational and other content every week. If you want to learn about our unique framework for modeling credible financials, watch our masterclass, Build Credible Financials for Your Venture. The link is in the description. The masterclass is completely free. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.